Welcome to the course on thermodynamics. I am Sunil Kale and I am the coordinator of this course. In this lecture, I will give a brief overview of how I have planned this course and how we will execute it in the next 12 weeks. Broadly, this lecture is organized in three sections. We will begin with topics as to what is the what are the topics that we will cover, how we will how they are sequenced, what are their prerequisites, how they follow upon one another. We will then go to learning resources as to what we have with us for learning and then we will look at a little bit at my approach to problem solving. So, we start with the course starts with the first set of lectures which are classified as foundational or fundamental or basics. We begin the course by developing a set of concepts and definitions which we will use all the time throughout the course. These are very important because they form the basis of everything we do and whatever we do we can interpret it in the light of these concepts and definitions. Some examples of this is that we could define what is a system, what is a boundary and a whole bunch of thermodynamic aspects including definitions of what is pressure, what is temperature and in an important way that we are all looking at a continuum and whether we are looking at microscopic, macroscopic approach and like that. So, here we will come across several concepts and definitions. Some of them are used early on in the course, some are used much later in the course, but this set provides a complete coverage of all definitions all concepts that we will encounter in this course. So, this is the first week. In this we will also look at applications and some motivation as to why we are learning this subject. The next module builds upon concepts and definition which we will be covering in weeks 2, 3 and 4 and this is the laws of thermodynamics. We will study the statements of the laws, their mathematical formulation in a very general fundamental way. So, that these are applicable to in, uh, any system, any working substance, any application. So, these two modules they give us a foundation which is good for the entire course and also what happens beyond this in advanced courses. Everything would build up on what we have learnt over here. Then we look at in week 5 what I have listed here as properties of a pure substance and when we say properties of a pure substance we are essentially saying thermodynamic properties of a pure substance. What we mean by a pure substance? What are the properties that we are looking for? What are the relations between properties? How did these properties come into being? How do we get those numbers that we have? What is the equation of state? So, these are some of the issues that we will look at and our focus as you can see in the title is a pure substance, a substance with only one type of a molecule. We will also see how we can take real applications and as a first cut analysis make a very big assumption and say that this is a pure substance and we get some idea of how that device will work. 
So, this builds up the foundation for the next part of the course, where we look at engineering applications. So, this could be two things. First, we look at the Carnot cycle. You might have already come across this term. We will see what it is in terms of what we have learnt in the earlier part of the course, what are its limitations and how realizable is it. Why can't we achieve it? And if we can't achieve exactly that, what is the next best thing that we can achieve? So, this is builds up on the idea of what is a cycle and then how we make it realizable. Each cycle is consists of several processes. Each process is achieved in an equipment or a device. So, that is what we will look at in the next part where we look at engineered equipment and how we put these equipment together to produce a system that does something that we want it to do. So, here we will look at various devices which are possible, realizable and we can see them around us. So, these are practical applications. So, this is what we will cover the Carnot cycle in week 6 and we look at various engineered equipment and systems in week 7 and 8 and our focus here will be for all these devices say give an example a turbine or a pump or a heat exchanger. Here we will see how to apply what we have learnt in the earlier part, which is the laws, properties and of course, all the concepts that we developed. So, this takes us into the realm of the real world of engineering and what we will see from different manufacturers, the designs that have evolved over time have become better and better and at the same time they also have a limitation beyond which you cannot much improve them. So, what is it that happens? The thermodynamics of it, we will look at it. So, we will be looking at only the thermodynamics of this and these applications will have many other feature aspects, which we will not talk about in this course. In all these things that we do here, we will assume that we are working with a pure substance. In some cases, even if it is not a pure substance, but a mixture, we will make some quick appro approximation to model it as some sort of a pure substance. So, we can apply various things that we have learnt here. Now, that is a simplification and there are many applications where such an assumption is not a very good assumption, but a good assumption to start analyzing and getting some idea about what that device does. So, in the last module, we will look at, we will go beyond pure substances and we will look at mixtures of ideal gases and their properties. Then we will look at mixtures of air and water and the basics of psychrometry. Then we will look at reacting systems and the basics of combusting systems and phase and chemical equilibrium. So, this will be taking us into week 9, week 10, week 11 and week 12. In general, mixtures can be of any two substances in any phase, two or even more substances, solid, liquid or gas, as many materials as we want to put them. Various other disciplines of engineering look at different types of mixtures. In this thermodynamics course, we will restrict ourselves to the thermodynamics of ideal gases, mixtures of ideal gases and we will see what are the laws that govern 
these uh, mixtures and how we can get their properties. Once we have these properties, we can then see how we can use them in the analysis of different applications. So, that is mixtures of ideal gases. Then we look at one particular type of a mixture, which is again of ideal gases. One is air, the other is water. So, it is a two substances in the gaseous phase are mixed together and we want to know how does this mixture behave. Our motivation for learning this is a science of part of engineering which is called psychrometry with applications in air conditioning and the concept can be extended to many more applications. So, we are basically going to learn the basics of how a mixture of air and water, water as water vapor, which we will see why we analyze it as an ideal gas, air also we take as an ideal gas, we treat both of these as a pure substance. H2O of course, is a pure substance, air we approximate it as a pure substance and treat this mixture and learn how to analyze this. So, that is week 10 on psychrometry, which is a special category of the mixtures of ideal gases. We then go beyond mixtures of ideal gases and say, well, what if they are having a chemical reaction? So, when we say reacting systems, we are looking at chemical reactions. And the focus of this course is basically on combustion basics. So, what we will see is some broad features of fuels and their combustion. See how we can have global characterization of these systems and then we come to the thermodynamics of it and say from what we have learnt earlier in the first module, how can I use that knowledge to predict what temperatures will be achieved in the reaction, what will be the energy released by a reaction, all of that will come by applying the laws of thermodynamics to reacting systems. We will look at combustion reactions in general in a global sense. We look at a little more specifically towards combustion of one gaseous fuel in a gaseous oxidant. So, this is week 11 on reacting systems. In the last week, we will look at the phenomena of chemical equilibrium and phase equilibrium. So, here what we do is we extend what we have learnt earlier into saying that if I have a mixture of certain pure substances at a certain temperature what will be the actual composition of this mixture? That means, some reactions would have taken place and in addition to these three, we will have something more or we may not have these three at all and we may have something else over there. For example, if we mix nitrogen and oxygen in a put in a vessel and heat it, then we can ask well, there will be some nitrogen and oxygen still remaining, what about how much nitrous oxide got formed. So, the thermodynamics of this is what we will study in chemical equilibrium part of this course and in phase equilibrium we will study that part where you have different phases solid, liquid or vapor. We will see what are what is the thermodynamics that tells us how much of liquid will be there, how much vapor will be there, at what temperature, at what pressure and what is the science behind it as to why these things happen. So, that is the last part of this course. We will now make a map of how all these topics build up in this course. At the most fundamental level, something which is always true, always applicable, 
no matter just this course beyond it in other courses in other applications. The very basic thing is concepts and definitions. This is the bedrock of everything that we do later on. Along with this, we use some of these concepts and definitions and brought ourselves more new knowledge. This is the knowledge of the laws of thermodynamics. So, these are two aspects which are inviolable. They are always true. And if you have any doubt, always go back to these two points and see that if it makes sense, it is fine. If it does not, question it again and maybe change your view. So, these are two things that come up and using knowledge of some of these implications of the laws and using the concepts and definitions, we add more new knowledge as to how does a substance behave and that gives us the properties of a pure substance. Having done that, we then say now how can I apply this and for that application, we say I will take knowledge of both the concepts, I need some knowledge of the properties and of course, this all governed by the laws of thermodynamics and we will see the new knowledge here is the knowledge of the Carnot cycle and based on these, we will study what are its limitations and how it is possible to modify a cycle which will no longer be a Carnot cycle, but becomes something which can be practically realized. We do the same thing and then we look at individual equipment and say well, using this knowledge, the laws that every device and every equipment has to obey the laws of thermodynamics. Then we determine what are the working substances that are there and we take their properties and of course, we all have the same concepts and definitions which we are using and with that, we begin to analyze and understand the performance of engineered equipment and engineered systems. So, this complete one part of the course where our objective was to come up to this point where we have enough knowledge and basics to understand cycles and understand engineered equipment. In the next part of the course, what we do is of course, here in both these cases besides the knowledge that we have, we have limitations coming in from practical engineering. So, this is one more input that we have and here also we have this input and we will often invoke these practical aspects to say well something is possible, but it would not work too long. Something is possible, but it might be very expensive. Something is theoretically possible, which means that thermodynamics laws, properties, concepts, everything is fine, but I do not have the materials that will make it happen. So, we are bringing an element of practical engineering into saying why we are looking at these equipment and these cycles and not looking at so many other things which are possible, but are not realizable. So, there is a element of the practical engineering that influences what we learn in these modules. This changes with time, changes from one make to the other make, people who design it, who manufacture it, they have their own experience. Many of them are pushing the boundaries further and further in terms of materials, managing stresses which determine the life of the equipment or device and coming up with better and better products. So, this was all part of what we may call the life with the pure substance, but the principles that we have learned which were the laws, they are universally applicable, concepts universally applicable. We now go beyond pure substances and there we say that I am going to look at mixtures of ideal gases. So, here again we invoke concepts and definitions that we have learnt in developing the properties like before here also we are influenced by the laws of thermodynamics. 
and we also get the help of the properties of a pure substance. So, we are taking these three things together and now putting different substances together and asking the question how does this thing behave, what are its properties. So, this is what we do here. It takes us one step closer to practical engineering. For example, in an application if we have combustion products are expanding as happens in an internal combustion engine, then a first cut analysis we could treat that as an ideal gas and treat it as a pure substance. In a more refined analysis we will say I am not going to consider it as a pure substance, I will consider it as a mixture of ideal gases and now I am being more realistic, I am getting closer to reality. So, that is why we are looking at this aspect and then using this aspect we move on to three other modules which are first a special case of ideal gases of air and water both treated as an ideal gas and we will learn why we can treat them as an ideal gas. Then we extend all of this knowledge including all of what we have learned the laws in come to reacting systems and of course, here we are applying these laws further again. So, we are coming from there and also coming to reacting systems. This is one application of thermodynamics which is of importance in many applications such as all the energy that we get most of it comes by burning a fuel that fuel could be wood, coal, oil, natural gas or so many other substances. And from there we get most of our electricity. So, this is the basics of how this combustion process takes place. It is the first level analysis of a very complex phenomena. We will also look at the practical issues here of how does combustion actually take place, where does the reaction take place how I can make a system boundary and apply the laws to that system and of course, how we will get properties of substances to put numbers on what happens. And the third application that we see here is phase and chemical equilibrium, where again we apply the mixed properties of a pure substance and we will also then look at the laws as applicable to these systems and ask questions of how much of the rea forward reaction will take place, how much decomposition will take place, what are the compounds that are formed in a equilibrium state, how do different phases exist in equilibrium, what is the criteria for them being in equilibrium all of this will come out in this part. So, all of this completes our 12 weeks course and it gives us a foundation to study more advanced topics which are the topics of postgraduate courses. So, if you want to study advanced thermodynamics all of this is necessary and we in that course here we would assume that we have the knowledge of all these things that are there on this picture here. So, that is the importance of this course, it is also the basics that from here we now have enough idea at least at the first level to have a good understanding of practical engineering. So, this is the course in a picture of what we learn, how different modules build up on one another and the sense that when you go to the next higher module we are invoking what we have learnt in the earlier module and so that learning from the basics continues all throughout the course. We will now look at what learning resources we have. In this course there are a set of video lectures which are available. So, each week a certain number of videos will become visible, these can be seen. Along with that I am also going to be providing my course notes which is crisp treatment 
of all the concepts that come in that particular set of lectures. Every week we will have assignments. I encourage you to solve it. If you have doubts, by all means, feel free to post it on the forum and I will answer it as quickly as I can. The problems revisit the basics of that module and also look at some applications. And even if a problem looks like it is devoid of a direct mention of an application, I encourage you to look at it, think about it and ask the question, where is it that such a system could be taking place in the real world? Because most problems that have been made have an element of a motivation coming from some practical device. After a certain time, I will be putting up the solutions of every problem in every assignment. So, you can see for yourself how you did and learn how a proper solution ought to be developed. We will come back to it in a little while when we look at systematic problem solving. The evaluation of the course is based on a few quizzes which will be MCQ, MSQ type. These are short quizzes 10 to 15 minutes and this will be an online test and after the quiz the solution also will become available. The course will end with the course exam which is offline paper pen examination like any classical exam that we write. This will be of 3 hours duration. A calculator will be available and property data that you require that will be available as a data sheet. Of course, this exam is closed book. One of the important things that I'll, you will see in the solutions of the assignments that I have given is that each problem has been solved in a very systematic way. And that is one of the learnings from this course of how to do systematic problem solving. There are some problems where you know what the formula is, we can just put the numbers and you get the answer. But to get the systematic way of doing it, you would have to follow a certain procedure which is given in some of the notes that I give out and also in the solution of the problems that I give. And I encourage you to follow that systematic problem solving for this is how one would do professional engineering. Getting the right answer is one issue, but in the real world there could be two things happening. One, there could be a mistake, so you have to go back and do it. And second, you may have to repeat that calculation for some other set of numbers. So, if you are systematic and thorough in developing the solution, this task becomes much more easier and you save a lot of time. So, although solving a problem systematically would physically take more time, but in the long run that is how it will benefit you in actually solving complex problems. The quizzes will of course, be multiple choice type. Even here the solutions that I will provide of the MCQ, I will give a discussion on every aspect of the MCQ or MSQ type question why one option is right, why one option is wrong, that discussion is also available in these solutions. Besides the notes and the lectures, a course like this requires a lot of resources from different places. We do not need to remember many of these things, but we have to remember where to get that information from. The most widespread availability is there on the web. Anytime we have a doubt or we need data of a substance or a clarification or you need to look at an engineered equipment information, we can go to the web and see things. Handbooks are a valuable source that give a lot of information. But beside these, one of the most important things we require in this course is data on the properties of substances. So, these have been tabulated, 
some of these are available as tables. There are some online resources where you input some information that tells you all the properties. And there are also various data sets or databases which have extensive tabulation of thermodynamic property data. So, we will use this and it is necessary to do that problem solving and also if you are doing practical engineering, there also you need property data, you will have to go back and use data from somewhere here. One of the issues that arises here that properties of a substance it is not one exact property which is there, but there are several sources including textbooks and there are many other property books, handbooks and what you will notice is that from one source to the other there could be differences in the value. So, this is inherent in property data when it comes to thermodynamics. And so, what I suggest is that while my solutions I use one properties from one source, you can use any other source. It is likely that your numbers will be slightly different, but in the end the answers especially of the calculated parameters like heat and work, they are not going to be different. But individual properties could see a lot of variation. There is no need to get worried about it. This is the way it is and there is no one particular source which can be said to be exact or the best. There are various reasons why people use different sources. So, that is a word of caution here. The next thing we have here is uh, standards. Thermodynamics has come a long way and now there are several standards which tell us what the industry and what everyone follows. I have listed a few here. Indian standard 80,000, it has various parts, but there are some parts which tell us the symbols, quantities, units and their meaning in thermodynamics. So, I encourage you to see this. This is part number 5 of this standard. Part number 4 of this standard deals with terms in uh, mechanics. There is Indian standard 3232 which tells us what are the flow symbols. So, when we make a system and show a picture of a turbine or a heat exchanger, we are, we are basically largely following IS 3232, but it is a good practice to adopt this because in the real world of engineering, this is what industries would be following. Similarly, there are various agencies which have put out standards for properties. But then there are more than one of these and their values could be slightly different. Some of these are regarded as the best data and that is what we will be using that. So, there are different formulation of standards. For example, even the temperature scale has an international standard, various properties of materials, they have got their own standards. So, we will be using those things. And finally, this is only the beginning and introduction of this course. There is lot more beyond the lectures and I encourage you to explore, discover and add to the richness of this course. On that note, we will conclude this lecture. Thank you.